My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret. Welcome back to another episode of the Inbound Secret, guys. Once again, I am your host, Bryce Vance, where we talk tips, tricks, strategy, the inside to success. We highlight entrepreneurs. Today, we have a special guest. We've got none other than Sean Mathis, the CEO of Surefire Media, founder of Lead Genie. Back in the day, you did selling with Sean. You've done stuff with Uncle G. You're down in Dallas just crushing it, it seems like, because I've, I've known about you since long before I got into the agency space. Nice. Tell everybody a little bit about who Sean is. So um, I appreciate you having me first and foremost and uh, you know sharing this with your audience. I think it's fantastic that you do this and bring value to folks. Um, yeah, truth be told, I've always wanted to do a podcast and I'm just not dedicated enough. So kudos to you for being dedicated and keeping it going because, man, this this kind of content is super valuable and super helpful for people. So bless you for doing that. A uh, little bit about myself. I'll just give you the short version. Went to the military out of high school, uh, sold real estate for a little bit and then got into the insurance world. Loved it. Killed it. Um, went on to uh, start my book at Liberty Mutual. I was rookie of the year there, number one rookie agent hired that year out of about 1,500, top uh, five in the country, number two in Texas. And along that path, I ran into some uh, relationships with a, a cast from a TV show called Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles, Million Dollar Listing New York. Started doing meet and greets with these guys and, and uh, bringing them out for networking events. That kind of morphed into uh, booking them for speaking engagements around the world and um, ended up building a company called Millionaire Masterminds out of that. And with that, we actually created a mastermind platform for celebrity personalities to help them get their message out to their followers. And uh, we did that for several years, uh, did programs with Ronnie Coleman. We did a fitness challenge with him, a 30 day fitness challenge. We did something with uh, Craig Robertson of the Cleveland Browns. Pretty much every cast member on New York and in, in LA, we did some sort of an event, whether it be a, a course, webinars, speaking engagements, meet and greets, super fun time. Uh, Liberty Mutual didn't like that so much. That's where I was working. Uh, they said, hey, you got to pick one. You can't have a job and another business. I said, you know what? This is a change of a lifetime. So I went with that. And uh, from there, I decided, well, realistically, this this whole TV person, I think these, these guys have a short lifespan. So I need to look at something long term. Well, I decided I obviously knew something about insurance and lead generation and marketing. So I thought, you know what, I'll set up a, a course and see if I can get anybody to want to learn my methods and how I did it. And so I started with the Agency Alliance Mastermind back in 2013. Uh, we built one of the first social media masterminds that was open to anybody that wanted to learn social media lead generation. Built a, a very large um, program there. We did thousands of people. That's where I did the Brought in uh, Grant Cardone. We did a, a joint venture there where he was offering all the sales training to my guys that I was doing the marketing training for. We did that for about a year and a half. Hey, Sean, I don't know if you can hear me, but it looks like uh, it looks like you froze for a second. So we're going to we're going to keep rocking and rolling, but you may have to repeat. That you you froze for a little bit. Your connection went sour. Can uh, you can you step it back like 15, 20 seconds and just repeat? Where where were I, where is that? So it was right after the joint venture with Uncle G. Okay. So we did joint venture with Grant Cardone. He handled all of the sales and uh, sales training for my guys that I was doing the marketing training for. Uh, and then from there we launched the marketing agency, which was done for you services. A lot of agents were like, hey, man, this is great stuff, but can you guys just handle the marketing for us? So we started the marketing agency where we handled all the marketing and lead generation. 
and uh, primarily focused on the insurance world and slowly kind of uh, expanded our reach into mortgage, real estate, solar, getting into dental. And um, then the last couple of years, we've really been working on technology with marketing automation softwares, SEO and review, reputation management. So just a lot of projects going on that we've launched. It's been crazy, crazy busy and uh, just an absolutely fun industry. We were talking earlier about the dynamics and the changes and how fast paced it is. And it's, uh, I love it, man. Yeah, it's one of those, it, it, I always love having people like you on that, that follow the same kind of trajectory, whether, whether we knew it or not, whether, whether I was following or, or you were following, there's always some kind of, there's always some kind of like path, right? Whether you carve your own or it's an existing path, it's a pathway that you're taking to, to really make an impact. And I know for you, just like for me, it's, it's about the impact that you can make to help change that, to help change lives, help give somebody an opportunity over just doing it for a dollar. Because quite frankly, and, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree on this, this isn't the easiest way to make a dime. <laughs> yeah. No, not. It's, it's probably one of the most rewarding because I get to see, like I just did a funnel Friday for a community I'm in called Virtually Limitless. And I do one every Friday between 11 and like one. And in that, I got permission from a recent client where it from Black Friday to the end of Cyber Monday, it was like a total of $1,000 ad spend. We made them just shy of 40 grand in revenue for their first launch nice. ever. Nice. And so I got permission from them to do a highlight on that. And so I broke that system down as much as I could without like showing proprietary sure. information to the community. And that's the type of reward that we get from this. It's not the easiest thing in the world, no. but it can be simple. So talking about that, I've followed you for quite a while and we've gotten to know each other off and on over the years, more so recently than ever before. What got you, I want, I want to know, because for me, I got into insurance back in the day and quite frankly, it was probably a mistake because I had to go through a ton of bullshit through that. <laughs> uh, just a ton of fucking, fin, FINRA's a bitch, okay? <laughs> FINRA's a pain in my ass. Um, but long story short, I got into it because I didn't know what else to do and I knew that I was tired of having a boss, quote unquote, and insurance gave me an opportunity to somewhat be self-driven, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what got you into insurance before Surefire Media, before Millionaire Mastermind, before the Sean Mathis we know today? What got you into the like stepping stones that got you to where you are now? Yeah, so when I got out of the military, I was actually uh, doing construction with, at the time I was married, uh, my my wife at the time, her, her dad, uh, building new houses in 2005 that, you know, real estate was booming. I was busting my tail, man. And I, I saw these realtors pulling up in nice cars and suits. And I'm like, dude, I'm on the wrong side of this. I want to sell real estate. So I got my real estate license, did that, went gangbusters because anybody with a pulse and a sign in 2005, six and seven were selling real estate. So I crushed it. Problem was I didn't know how to build a business, right? I was 19 years old, 20 years old. Um, Ended up buying a couple houses, three cars, and then 2008 happened. And that's when the guys who actually knew how to run a business uh, stayed around. And the guys like myself became a statistic of that uh, environment. So I talked to the insurance guy that I was doing all my deals to. He's like, man, you'd be perfect at this. Told me how it worked. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. So I went and talked to some recruiters and uh, got into it and loved it. Um, because at that point, everybody has to have it, right? So now it's just selling me over the next guy which you can't sell yourself, then you can't sell anything. So I uh, got into it, loved it. It was awesome. Um, and once I got to, I was working for an agent, then I went to start my book at, at Liberty. Uh, absolutely was crushing it there. Made my first six for a year when I was 26 years old. Um, just income was exploding. And I thought I bled blue, like I was gonna retire there, great benefits. And then I started getting into personal development and there was a coach and I always give her credit anytime I get a chance. Her name is Tanya Waring, first coach that I ever hired. She actually wrote the copy for My Pillow, if you've ever heard of it. Yeah. Uh, she wrote one of the most successful ad copies and she's on the infomercial still today, QVC. Her name's Tanya Waring. Hired her as a mentor. 
And I was unfulfilled because at the time, everything that I had done was money focused. All I wanted to do was make a hundred thousand, made that hundred thousand. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, now, now what? I was empty because I, I had no purpose with that goal. And so she was the first one that opened my eyes to say, you know, you've got to have something deeper than just money. Like it can't be about money because if, what is the money going to do? What are you doing with it? And I hadn't gone that deep. I thought the money was going to solve the problems. Right. And long story short, she was like, you know, I'm not dissuading you from doing the insurance thing, but if what you want to do, I think is much bigger than where you're at. You need to open your mind and open your eyes to opportunities. I'm not saying look for another job, just be open. And I was trying to figure out how do I get to hundred thousand dollars a month? And I couldn't mechanically put that together with the ecosystem I was in. And she was like, you're trying to figure out A to Z and you're not going to move forward because you're so focused on this. You, you could be missing all kinds of stuff. And when I opened that opened up and really kind of realized there's other things that I can open my mind to. That's when I met the cast for million dollar listing. And that's when that kind of led into all these other things. And I realized maybe insurance isn't my calling. Maybe there is other things to do. And that's like really what put me on the trajectory to start venturing out into other things and just letting my creativity say, what else can I do? And just started going for it. I love it. I love it. I ended up, uh, just to tell you a little bit about kind of that time in my history, I did the insurance and financier route and did I like it? Yeah, it was okay. Uh, was it my calling? No. I found that I loved helping people more than I loved the product, the the service, the benefits of the product. It was it was the helping people side of things that I fell in love with. And quite frankly, uh, I wasn't a gigantic fan of the company that I was appointed with, the primary company, because I was a. It, it wasn't just closed, and it wasn't like a broker. I was semi-captive is the term they used mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i could write outside but only if they said no right good and so i was working for this company for a while and they kept doing dumb fucking shit like right when i came in they fired two entire areas right when i was i was like the only dude walking around my town for a while that sold <laughs> everybody else got fired and i yeah. had zero fucking training right like my training came from the 1-800 number you call when you don't know what the fuck's going on. And you're just like, yeah. so I need help. did that, made it work because it was, I'm either going to sink or swim, right? And much like a lot of the entrepreneurs that are listening to this, much like yourself, like we're a little stubborn. <laughs> so, so it wasn't like, eh, I tried. It was like, nah, this is going to happen. One way or another, this is going to happen. Huh. Uh, so I made it work and then they brought in new management and new staff and they brought in new districts and then they kept doing dumb shit and they didn't like the fact that I wasn't a sheep for the lack of a better term. Like one of the biggest arguments that I ever had with this company, it went on for like two years. It ultimately led to us parting ways. And then a whole bunch of bullshit happened afterwards. They tried to sue me because I was, I threatened to sue them. And then I had, I had passed like five investigations with flying colors already. They reopened new investigations. I had to fly over to fucking Maryland and go speak to Finn. It was a whole shit show. Yeah. But, <clears throat> uh, ultimately ended with me pleading, just saying, Hey, I don't acknowledge or accept any of your accusations, but all on paper state that I accept one of yours on these conditions, no fee, no regulation. I voluntarily withdraw from the industry. We part ways. Right. And so I voluntarily withdrew because I was just tired of the rigmarole. But the mm. argument that ultimately led to that, and tell me how you feel about this, because to me, if you're going to advertise a discount, you need to have the integrity to offer that discount, right? <clears throat> so this particular institution offered a discount they called early shopping. 5% off if you future date any policy change. So you've got 15 to 30 days to change from your old company to your new, and it automatically takes fruition. Mm future binding they had the biggest fucking problem with that because like i had it so of course i'm gonna offer it to people and most people were like yeah i want it so like 90 percent of our book took advantage of that 
And then, and then they were like, why are you giving so many people this discount? Like, if you don't want me to have it, take it away. Take the button away if you don't want me to sell it. Because as long as it's there, I'm going to use the thing, right? <clears throat> so we had this whole back and forth. But the thing that I noticed, and I think you noticed going through all of that, you had a much more pleasant experience through insurance than I did. And that kind of led you to teaching insurance agents, right? Did you have the same kind of thing that I had when I fell in love with the helping people, not the product or service? Yeah, I, I wasn't in love with the, I mean, who can, it's, it's boring, right? Like, I mean, it's not a sexy product. Um, for me, I'll be honest, it wasn't even helping people. I mean, <laughs> I, I was in it because I enjoyed the, um, I enjoy sales, man. Like, I still get on sales calls today. It's funny when I talk to people, they're like, wait, the, the guy in the video, like Sean Mathis in the videos? Yeah, it's me, man. Uh, people are surprised that I get on the phone and makes, I love making sales calls. I love it. I just love the hunt. Um, I love the, um, the, the referral partnerships that I had. Um, I loved everything about the position except the policy and the changes and the mundane pieces of it. Um, I future bound everything, man. We had the same thing uh, and everything got a future bound date. I'm like, Hey, today's the third winter monthly payment uh, it comes out on the 19th. You want to just keep that? Great. Let's find it for the 19th, get it all done. And instead of paying them, you'll just pay me. Like we future bound everything. Um, I was on a first name basis with compliance because I was always like right outside the lines. Uh, an example was you can't have an insurance blog. So I, I had said, I got a personal blog and it, the personal blog was insurancewithshawn.com. They tried to say, you have an insurance blog. No, I have a personal blog. Just happens to be called insurancewithshawn.com. So I was always like pushing yeah. the envelope. But what's interesting is after all of, you know, I was on a first name base with the clients. I had one of the highest closing percentages in the country. I think it was like 52%. I got regular audits from compliance because they're like, he's got to be given discounts that don't apply. Like they were trying to find something that I was doing wrong. Truth was, I was just doing something completely different than everybody else when it comes to marketing and lead generation. And um, they, uh, they ended up citing, you know, hey, the stuff you're doing with the million dollar listings, it could be a conflict, RESPA, blah, 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 blah. I said, look, man, I'm number two in the state. You got a room full of agents that aren't meeting quota. Why are you dealing, why are you on my ass about this, man? Mm -hmm. Go talk to the guys that aren't selling. Like, I... I enjoy my job. I like what I'm doing here. I don't need this job. So either let me do my job or I will go somewhere else. And yeah. uh, that's why I ended up just leaving. Because like you said, it's just so many politics. And they wanted me to be a corporate yes man, very similar of you. And I'm just, it's not me. Can't do it. Yeah. I'm, too, I'm too stubborn for it, man. I'm too stubborn for the corporate yes man side of things. So... <clears throat> Let's let's trickle in some pixie dust or some gold nuggets for everybody listening, because because I love your story. I love how you've kind of come up. You've been impact driven really kind of your entire life, whether that impact was you wanted to make an impact on your wallet. You just didn't know you wanted to help people at the time or not. There was some kind of driving force. A lot of the people listening to this are stuck whether they're stuck at just a launch or they're stuck and they can't scale or 2020s beat the shit out of them. But the one thing that's always helped me get through being stuck was much like you. I love the chase. I love the hunt. Hopping on sales calls, having that conversation, building the relationship, closing the business. But that's, that's something that really doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. Right? <clears throat> so What's some advice that you could give people listening today that's helped you go from where you were to where you're now that they could start doing today, whether it be start having more conversations, start shaking more hands, start advertising more. What, what's some kind of piece of advice that you would recommend? Um, I'd say the first thing is you, you've got to kind of step back and be, be real with yourself. You got to be real about your situation if you're unhappy with where you're at, you have to understand, you have to be willing to, to look yourself in the mirror and say, what got me here? What don't I like about this? And what do I really want to change? Because a lot of, you know, we work with hundreds of business owners, uh, talk to hundreds of them uh, 
every single month, go through a fact finding process. And it, it, it amazes me how little business owners actually know about their business. They don't know their numbers. They don't know how much money they're spending, what their ROI is. They don't know where their business is coming from. They're just kind of doing shit with no real plan. Data drives everything. The data will tell the story. Get to know your data. You have to know your data. You have to know how many phone calls. I can tell you right now, my guys that are on the phones, it takes them 13 dials to get a decision maker. They get four decision makers are going to get one appointment. They need five appointments set every single day. The count for no shows, they're going to get three of those. You do three appointments a day, you're going to close three deals, a, uh, three deals uh, a week, right? And it's just, it's numbers and it, it works. And you got to follow those. There's activities that will get you there. So that means you got to make 130 calls a day to hit those five appointments, right? So yeah. are you doing the activity? Because all the data is there. Now, a lot of people don't track it. They don't know those numbers. And I use tracking systems. So we know those numbers. You have to. Um, but creativity, you got to be willing to get outside the box. I think one of the things that's really helped me is I, I happen to be creative and that's not everybody's thing. So if you're not creative and you're not a salesperson, then be willing to invest and find somebody who is, right? Um, you know, I, I, I did a deal with Grant Cardone. We did an interview talking about hiring people and small business owners overwhelmingly fail to delegate and they fail to hire because they look at employees as expenses, but your employees should be making you money, right? If you're not creative and you're wasting time racking your brain, trying to be creative, knowing at the end of the day, what you create isn't going to be that great. Not only did you waste time, but then you put out a shitty offer, right? Get somebody, outsource it, partner with somebody, Jay, figure something out creative to get done what you need to get done. And then I think the biggest thing for me is I burned the ships, man. When I, when I left insurance, I didn't renew my license. When I left real estate, I didn't renew my license. There is no plan B. I'm doing this and we're going to make it work. It's going to work. That's it. There's no, there's no going back. There's no getting a job. There's no, it can't even cross your mind. Uh, we've had bad months. We've, we've been several times over the last seven years where I was like, shit, man. But <laughs> I had to refocus and say, you know what? The money is there. It's, I've been marketing. I have my system. It's there. I got to find it. It's there. Get on the phone and find it. Now, a lot of people don't have a, a, a pipeline. They don't do consistent marketing. So that can be problematic. So you have to start marketing. You have to keep a consistent pipeline. If you can't at any moment log into a database somewhere and find a hundred people <laughs> so that you've already talked to, marketed to, who's interacted, that's a problem. you got to have it, man. So I think it comes down to consistency, marketing, perseverance, and unwavering commitment to success in what you're doing. So many people, I think, they get ready for that plan B, or they start thinking about things, or they start, you know, uh, let me buy this little product that I can do over here. Maybe this is, and they start taking on these little side jobs. They get sucked into MLM companies or whatever, and they start looking for side income all of that taking away from what they really need to be focusing on. And I think they lose sight of their dream and they get into this reaction mode. And I think the biggest thing is, and this Grant talks about this in his 10 X rule of what is the end result? Like we get, we're, we're so used to setting incremental goals. You know, like if you want to make $10 million a year, don't put that on a shelf somewhere and say, uh, in 20 years, I want to make $10 a year, but realistically this year, I'm okay with 250 and the next year to 300. No, if your goal is 10 million, your goal is 10 million. You never reduce that target. You may not hit that goal this year, but if you bring down a $10 million goal to a 250, 500,000, you're not going to hit any more than 250 or 500,000 because no. that's the effort you're going to be putting toward it. And you're always going to fall short. So we keep the big goal in mind. And we may not hit it, but we'll figure out, okay, what, what can we do different that didn't get us there? Where did we spend time we shouldn't have spent? Where did we spend dollars we shouldn't have spent? And we're constantly evaluating. We understand our customers. There's just a lot. You just have to have laser focus. And it's not uncommon for me to do a 15, 16, 18 hour day, if need be. Um, and I think I'm just, you know, I'm not afraid to put in the work because I know what I want to do. And I know that there is no going back. I'm ne you'll never see me work for somebody. It's not going to happen. So it has to work. 
We'll find yeah. a way. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's that, – first off, yeah, 100% agree. But I think that's one of the qualities that I had a, I had a guest on yesterday. His show comes up in a couple days. Uh, he was a great dude. Steve Sims, I don't know if you're familiar with him. But he, me and him talked about his topic. One of the things that he pushes for in his coaching is go for stupid. And it really resonates because all of us entrepreneurs, we're wired a little different, right? Like you see your normal, you see your normal employee and we need employees. Don't get me wrong, but they clock out at five, whether the job's done or not. If I'm not done, or if I think I can make a bigger impact or help somebody else, or I need content, like I've got 20 videos on this laptop to my right that I've got to shoot and edit because I've got some shit that needs to be done by Christmas. I'm probably going to have a few long days. Is it the first time that's happened? No. Is it the last time that's going to happen? No. Am I going to do it? 100%. Because I don't clock out at five just because the day's over. Hell, realistically, I mean, I don't really even keep days anymore. Half the time, I don't know what day it is. So, <laughs> but the go for stupid methodology that Steve ran through with me, I kind of fell in love with. And tell me what you think about it. It goes along with your keep your big goal in mind, right? It's the thought process of go for something so ridiculous that you have to change as a person to be the person that hits that goal. And you're going to consistently do the effort. Gary Vaynerchuk posted up, I don't know, a couple weeks ago on his personal IG. And I still to this day love this post. He's posted it a few times, but it says, take your 10 year plan and figure out how to do it in a year. Yeah. You'll fail, but you'll yeah. be a hell of a lot farther down the road than if you thought you had 10 years. Yeah. 100%. So with that in mind, you, you know, probably better than anybody else, small business owners suck at hiring and they suck at kind of planning out because they don't track a lot of stuff, right? Nobody, even business school doesn't teach you how to be a business owner. They just teach you to be higher level management. You kind of fumble your way through everything. What would you recommend as far as the hiring aspect goes first? How can somebody find a quality employee and change their mindset, most importantly, about it being an expense versus an investment? Changing the uh, employer's mindset? Yes. So, and, and this isn't one of my strengths, right? I'll be honest with you. Um, because I'm, a, I'm not a great trainer, to be honest, man. I've got so many irons in the fire. Um, you know, I... I look for the entrepreneurial spirits. I look for somebody who can see the vision of what we're doing and isn't afraid to be shadow me for a while, but has the intuition to, to, to pick it up and make it their own, right? Like it's not rocket science, okay? You know, if you can understand the core concepts, understand the technology that we're selling and, and, and the services we provide, you don't have to know every nut and bolt and mechanic before you get out there and just start doing it. It's the best way to do it. And you got to find those self-starters. You know, for me, I think it's, it's finding the, the entrepreneurial spirited person in, in regards to sales. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, probably one of the most difficult things is to find a salesperson. The, the number one turnoff is somebody who says, what's my base pay. Right. Because that tells me that you're scared. Right. It, it, you obviously I would never take a base pay. I would take a commission, higher commission over a base pay any day of the week, because I know I'm going to go out there and absolutely crush it. You don't count my commissions. And my goal is to make it hurt when you write my commission check. Right. And I, I want my sales guys to make it hurt. Like I want to write a check that I'm like, damn, that's a big check. Um, but you have to be passionate. You have to understand and be able to have a vision, especially as a small company because you don't have the security that say an IBM or a Microsoft can offer a sales rep. So naturally you're not going to get top talent degree people that come into your one, two, three, four man operation because they're going to say, man, do I really have the potential to make what I want to make? Cause any quality salesperson is going to want to make money. And you've got to be able to show them that not only is the potential here, 
but I'm going to provide you all of the opportunity you need to make as much as you want. And it's going to be there. A lot of times business owners are scared because they don't have the marketing in place and they don't have the leads. I can't tell you how many business owners I've talked to who said, I need more leads, but I don't have enough salespeople to handle what we have, but I can't afford to hire a salesperson because we don't have any leads to give them. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Right. Um, and to me, the answer would be, well, then get the leads and bust your ass and work some, build up some capital to bring that guy on. Right. Um, but ultimately looking at what do I need to offer compensation wise for this to be a profitable scenario. And I let the, the sales reps know, here's what we make. Here's what you make. Here's our expenses. This is where we're at. Like I want them to take ownership of the company and where we're at. And so I'm an open book with everything. So that they, I want them to be part of getting this to something bigger. You're part of something bigger than just you selling and peddling products. We're going to grow this thing and you're going to be part of something bigger, right? And they have to buy into that. But I think a lot of business owners have been kicked in the nuts so many times they have lost that excitement and they don't have that passion to sell that opportunity because they're themselves are beaten up and like, ah, oh, man, I really don't know. I hope this works. Right. So it comes down to lack of confidence. I think a lot of guys need to really get back into uh, some personal development. They're afraid to admit that I might need to find this fire again. I might need to reignite myself. I can't tell me tell you how many agents. In fact, it's in the first chapter of this insurance marketing blueprint. Um, or maybe it's chapter five, but it's, what did you get into the business for? Like how many people have lost sight? Why they even started three, four, five years. They're just going through the motions, trying to make ends meet. And they've forgotten. What did you even get started for? What was the end result? Because like I said, they shelved that big goal and now they're just in the day-to-day -day grind and they lose passion. They get burned out because they've forgotten that bigger, that bigger ticket that they're after. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that you've been exceptional at over the years, or, or at least publicly facing, it appears that way. I don't know the insides of your business, but you're here on the podcast because you're doing big things, helping people anyways. You've launched a multitude of offers. Throughout the years, it seems like you've got an offer for basically every scenario to help your ideal client. And I love the fact that you've got that niche down Offers and constructing them for a lot of people are difficult. It's one of the biggest things we get asked to help with here at Funnel Driven is constructing an offer that converts. For those listening, those watching that are trying to figure out how 2020 is going to transfer to 2021, how restrictions are going to keep things maybe locked down, maybe not locked down, how their offer has to evolve. What's one thing that you can recommend to everybody when constructing an offer how to build it around something where you have that flow that for the lack of a term, that kind of guaranteed success that it's going to work because you've put in, you've put in everything that needs to be there. What, what are the steps that you take when you're building a new offer to make sure this, the success is there? So I don't put anything out until I've actually tested and proven it. Right. I don't sell ideas. I don't sell puff and smoke. I don't sell dreams. I'm not a motivational rah rah like i'm not gonna i'm not a grant card on that's gonna excite you or get you like you're not gonna get out of one of my trainings be like yes ah. <laughs> i'm a i'm a tactical strategic guy very logical data driven um it may not be very exciting but you're gonna understand the mechanics and you're gonna be able to follow and and i'm gonna give you a proven path and the reason i can give you a proven path is because i've already proven it i take the time first to do the testing, to do the split testing, to run the variations, to find the best, the, the, the best converting offer, uh, ad copy, landing pages, I split test. And once I have it dialed in, now I know it works, right? So I don't, I can come in with that confidence and say, this is going to work. The only reason it wouldn't is if you don't follow the instructions and understand most people won't follow the instructions. They're not gonna do the work. Um, but if you have done it and you know it works, then you'll have that confidence in being able to offer that. Now, I don't offer guarantees uh, because the only guarantee that I can make is that I did it and I know it works. I can't guarantee that you're going to do it and you're going to do it the way that I told you to do it. Um, 
And I, I lost faith in people doing that. I used to do guarantees early on in my career when I needed it. I used to say, look, I guarantee you that if you follow the steps here and you can show me it does not work, I will refund you your money. And I've never had anybody show me I did X, Y, and Z and I got a different result than you did. It, it, I mean, because it's literally, the thing. it'll work, it's done it, right? So uh, I prove concept before I ever bring it to market. Um, and that way I can come to the market with social proof. I think a lot of times people come with offers premature and they have an idea or they think it might work or they're working on it. And so they don't have any social proof in that offer. They don't have any case studies. They don't have any, here's what this guy did, this guy did, this guy did. So I'll beta test. Anytime I launch, I'll do a group of five or 10 people and I can come to the table with already having testimonials, case studies, proven results. And that really helps, man, to not have that in the page or in an offer. Uh, it really makes, can, the people are starving for certainty and there's so many, you know, smoke and mirrors, BS offers that offer nothing but fluff and people are really skeptical of that. So the more certainty you can sell with your offer, the better you're going to do. Oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's one of those things. I, I developed a sales system that we call thrive selling. That's specifically about how to utilize omnipresent ecosystems and then convert the opportunities that they bring to ranting and raving fans. And in that we talk about triggers and, and a lot of the triggers these days are based on like a, either socioeconomic or it's a past trauma or it's a like scenario where somebody saw X, they tried to do X, they got burned. And it's one of the reasons why I invited you on this show. You've been doing, you've been doing these types of offers and services for years now but not once anywhere on the internet. And I've scoured trying to see if I could find anything. Not once have you ever come off as the smoke and mirrors guru. You've never been the, here's a Lamborghini that I rented, come pay me. And yeah. the authenticity that, that attracted me to wanting you on the show, on top, on top of the fact we get to know each other a little bit more. But it's one of those things that I really hate to say is rare these days. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So as far as let's wrap up, because I know you've got a busy schedule and, and I've got to get running too. But before we get to how people can find you, what they can learn from you, how they can connect with you. I'm going to leave this open for you. You can talk about anything you want to talk about for the next few minutes, but I want it to be in regards to something that the people can do that they can see a direct result from data-driven result over the next few days or weeks. Uh, let, let's get specific. Tell me a little bit about your audience on, on what they might be doing that, that I could help them with. And if you don't mind, I'm going to fix this because I just turned gold all of a sudden. <laughs> I guess that, that's just the way it is. All right. So, so, so who, tell me about your audience real quick so I can understand and give them something that, that, that would be applicable. So the majority of our audience is made up of two sectors. Sector one is the newbie entrepreneur or the newbie business owner who just started something and they're in like the first three years, typically one to two years for the starting segment. And then the second half of the audience of, of the primary sector is made up of existing business owners, anywhere between about 100,000 to just shy of a million a year in annual revenues, and they're stuck. They've plateaued. They can't figure out how to take it to the next level. There are a few trinkled in bits that are just like 1099 sales reps, or like we've got some insurance and real estate agents that follow. Solar's a big audience. <clears throat> So we've got like the contractor and artist inside, but our primary clientele, our primary audience that listens to this on a regular basis is the small business owner, the mom and pop business owner that started something a, a decade or a few years ago, and they just can't seem to get past their own bottlenecks. So the show, like I told you when I invited you on, we highlight people that have done that. We highlight the inside look at success. We talk mindset, strategy, tactics. And that's something that I'd like you to talk about in your own words, whatever topic you want, that'll make the biggest impact for the people that are listening. Yeah. So look, man, if, if you're stuck 
and, and I tell clients this all the time, if you're stuck in whatever, whether it's reaching an income goal, whether it's scaling your business, hiring the next person, if you're stuck and you find yourself stuck for any period of time, then honestly speaking, you don't know the answer, right? If you did, you wouldn't be stuck. One of the biggest things that I see people struggle with is being willing to say, I don't have the answer. I'm, I'm stuck. I, I don't know what to do. And then be willing to seek somebody who's done it and be willing to fork out the cash to pay them if they'll take you on as a client and help you get unstuck because you need an outside perspective to look in because surely you've tried to figure it out and obviously you haven't done it. If you knew how, you wouldn't be there. And I think a lot of guys are pinching pennies. They're, they're saving pennies and costing themselves dollars in the long run because the longer you stay stuck, the more market share your competitors are eating up. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money early on in my career investing in masterminds, investing in uh, coaches. Uh, I've spent as much as $10,000 on, on coaching. I went through uh, Garrett J. White's uh, Wake Up Warrior, uh, in incredible, incredible program. Um, and I'll tell you, one of the, the probably the most powerful question, and, and I'll admit, it brought me to tears. We were in the, on the beach in a plank, and he knows all of our story long before we get there. And he gets into my ear and he's like, what the fuck do you want, Sean? What do you want, man? And I couldn't answer. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't even know. And going through that whole process, he helped me get clarity. And one of the things, I'll just share this quick story. Um, we got into groups in this program. We got into groups, just, just, just an illustration of, of how eye-opening it can be when you get a different perspective. I was a leader of a group. This guy, Raul Valis, uh, uh, ran another group. He's an awesome coach and trainer as well, runs Next Level. Um, and the rule was we took our group and we had two hours to go out of the community and raise as much money as we could by any means necessary. Uh, we just couldn't use our own funds or family. And we went out. We came back and we had like a hundred bucks. We were literally begging people to donate money. We were going to give it to a fundraiser, going business to business. And we came back and Garrett looked at us and he said, combined, you guys brought less than $300. Every single one of you make six or seven figures a year. Own your companies. And in three hours, you couldn't come back with even $500. The only rule was you can't use your own money. None of you thought to reach out to a friend that you know has money and say, dude, give me 500 bucks. I'm going to give it to charity. And it, it, it just like really hit me of like, how much more difficult did we make? We're sitting here begging for change and we've all got networks that are seven figures, multi seven figures. And all it would have taken was a text message and say, Hey, we're in this thing, you know, I'll pay you back, you know, whatever. Uh, and nobody thought to do that. And it just made me think about how many things am I really complicating in my own business, in my own world, trying to find some magic way to do this when at the end of the day, the answer is probably right in front of you. And you're looking for some, you're making it so difficult that you can't even see what's right in front of you. And I tell my sales guys all the time when they're in a slump, the money is there. Step back, retrace your steps and figure out where it's at. Slow down, quit confusing yourself, quit complicating the matter, and find the money. Find the offer. Go get somebody to look at your business with you and let them help you find it. And I think a lot of times they're just too afraid to invest some money because up to, I don't do it as much anymore because I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in personal development. But it's those types of trainings, working with Grant, working with Jared, working with Christopher John Stubbs, uh, Russell Brunson, Frank Kern. I mean, the, the biggest names that I could find, I wanted to learn from them. Uh, and I could then take that and reshape it and make it my own. But you're working from a, a limited space of knowledge that you have, and you have to go get more knowledge. And you, and you can't be afraid to go do that. Oh, I think that's probably the best way to wrap up is personal development's been huge for me. It's, I mean, I've done the same thing. Kern, uh, fuck at one point, Ryan, uh, we've done 
Marshall Silver. We've done, hell, I've done some Tony Robbins stuff. Like, and it's one of those things that I wish more people would be willing to do up front is invest in themselves because it's not something when you when you do personal development when you hire co- a coach a mentor it's not something that necessarily will directly impact your pocketbook today but it'll help you become that person that you need to be to make that 10 million that you want to make over the next few years and get yourself unstuck Dude, I'll just tell you one more story that, that we had this, I did this mastermind. I can't even remember who it was. I wish I couldn't give them the credit week one. It was five grand to do this thing. Week one, we went through the, the training and then they offered a one-on-one. I laid out my business. Cause I was like, I need to get to the next level. And I laid out my pricing model and they asked a few questions about what are you bringing? What, what are they getting for this? And I told them, you know, teaching how to generate leads. This is what they're probably making on average. He was like, dude, you were priced all wrong. You need to, you need to raise your price. What you're doing right now, all day long, people will pay $2,500. At the time I was charging 1500. That one, like 30 minute call. I didn't even go to the rest of the program. I was like, right. And so I restructured the, the sales pitch based on, let me show you how much you're going to make what the average agents working with me are making as a result of this eight weeks. Is that not worth, if I can help you make an extra $2,500 to $5,000 a month, you're going to be here for 10 years. That's $50,000, $500,000, you know, like this is 2,500 bucks. And that one small shift in how I present the product and the sales process changed everything. I literally doubled my income from that one little nugget. And you never know what you're going to get out of that interaction, but it just takes one small adjustment and it can take things to the next level. 100%, 100%. So with that on mind, where can everybody find you? Where can they connect with you? Where can they take a look at your current offers if they want to hire you, whether it be as a coach or maybe they want a copy of the blueprint? Tell us about what's, where, where can we go? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Everywhere. Uh, On, uh, on Facebook, you can find me, Sean J. Mathis. Now my dad's name is Sean Mathis. So make sure you find mine, Sean J. Mathis. And it's S-E-A-N. Hit me on my personal profile. Uh, follow me. I'll follow you back. My business page is Sean Mathis Official. Um, we've got so many websites, man. It, it just <laughs> depends on what you're looking for. Um, you can go to SeanMathis.com. You'll find some links there. Um, but, man, I just appreciate you having me here. And uh, I would love to, uh, to have you on my show. It's not as consistent as yours, but we do have some heavy players on there. Love what you're doing, man. I really appreciate your time. Your audience is amazing. And um, yeah, just hit me on Facebook, man. I appreciate you being on, man. I'll, I'll shoot you a link here real quick. Let's find out when we can make that happen. I'd love to be on. Uh, drop some drop some value. Talk about intent and affinity and neuroscience and see if we can't help some people out. Nice, man. Awesome, brother. Well, appreciate everybody... That. Make sure you go reach out, seanmathis.com, Sean J. Mathis on pretty much all social media. Go check it out. And then uh, if you hit him up, I'm sure he'll send you the information on how to grab a blueprint or any information, any help that you're looking for. Once again, Sean, thank you for being on. This was another episode of The Inbound Secret. This is The Inbound Secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound Secret.